So far and wide. Hey there, won't you give me that countryside? How you doing? Welcome to the Food Lady. It's our farm to table episode, and we're better to start than on the farm. We're at Swank Specialty Produce out in Loxahatchee, and we've got a great show for you. We've got this terrific farm, we've got all the great produce that I'm going to be showing you close up and personal, and we've got great restaurants and chefs that are going to cook up some great farm to table recipes. You won't want to miss a second of today's Food Lady. All right, guys, I'm coming with that hay. The Food Lady is brought to you thanks to the support of these fine sponsors. Are you looking to try something a little different? Well, we're talking farm to table, and the place that I know that is always spectacular and a little unique is Dada in Delray Beach. Here at Dada's, inside the kitchen, we've got a new face. Well, he's not a new face all around Palm Beach County, but he's a new face here at Dada. It's Jesse Steele, chef. How are you doing? Honored to see you me again. Yeah. You and I have worked together yes, over the have. years. Yeah. And I'm so excited now. Dada's is known for its comfort food, and you're going to be bringing more of that elevated comfort yeah, food. Yeah, we're, we're going to do some elevated comfort food and keep it. We're going to change it to a more seasonal menu and just keep it as comfortable as possible. So every three to four months, you're going to be changing it up with what's fresh? Yeah, pretty much every three months, uh, fresh and seasoned. And we're going to go with that. Well, that's the thing. We're talking farm to table on the show the entire month. Perfect. And uh, I know that you, that's a specialty of yours. It is. Yeah. And so what are we going to be working with here today? So today we got some uh, fresh farm vegetables from the area. Um, actually went to Bender's Farm today okay. and picked up all this stuff today. Awesome. Um, so we got a bunch of, you know, varied vegetables. We got some Florida rock shrimp from the Gulf Coast. Beautiful. And we're going to make a Frito Misto, kind of just toss it all together, give it a quick fry. And we're going to do a local honey and lemon aioli and a little local lemon and honey vinaigrette on the top. Beautiful, now yeah. it's Italiano. I'm used That's to the right. frito misto <laughs> yeah. here. So we got the shrimp, but the rock shrimp, all so, yeah, local. We got the shrimp. We got two kinds of zucchini there. So yeah, we have a gray zucchini and we have a golden zucchini. Okay. We got some local eggplant, little spring onions I cut into some little rings. Beautiful. Uh, lemons, we have some artichokes we cleaned and grilled first and just try to get a little smoky flavor in there with it too. Mm. Some Cuban bell peppers and a little basil and lemon. All right, well, let's get started. Sure. I'm going to have to grab you the... Yeah, a little flour. Flour. Yeah. Let's do this. All right. Put me so, to work. Here we go. Oh, you want to hold it? Yeah. Okay, cool. So, you know, we'll just get, get these guys in there. Okay. What do you have in the flour? It is just flour, salt, and pepper. Very simple. Okay. We can yeah. do that. Yeah, it's easy. <laughs> and the oil, what kind of oil? That is uh, canola oil. Okay, which yeah. is good for you. Yeah, totally. All right, we'll get a little bit of those in there. The right, basil we'll will go last. Yeah, we'll get some shrimp in there. Okay. All right, and we'll just uh, give that a little toss. Let's see, I don't want to get you too messy, so we'll uh, just kind Thank of... you. <laughs> yeah, I have a spoon, you want me to grab it? I'll use your hands, we yeah. wash them. All right, we will. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you wash them. Yeah, so we get everything in there, and then we're gonna go right into this other bowl. You wanna hold that for a second? Sure. And I'll just dump the skies in here. Okay. So we'll go right in the bowl. All right, and then I'll trade you. Okay. okay, done. All right, and we'll give this a little shake. Teamwork. So we say teamwork makes a dream work. It's business, exactly right. right. <laughs> and we'll get this guy right in there. Should be all right, and then we'll dump it in. Okay, and then we can get rid of that. But you can do it either way. You don't have a basket, yeah. dump them in there. That's right. All right, and we'll get rid of that. And get this guy here. So there, we're just gonna kinda... But if you dump them in, you need one of these kind of spoons. Yeah, you're gonna wanna be able to get it out uh, easily. How long do you think? It only takes about a minute. It, it's pretty quick. I, what you wanna do is the shrimp are so small, and I slice the vegetable so thin so that it can cook quickly. Okay. So you're basically just looking to get a little brown color on it. 
and it's going to be a really light coating. It's not going to be like a tempura where it's like battered. It's just going to be just the little crispy edges on there. That's all you really want. That's all you, just you want. want the crispy. crispy. Yeah, yeah, you want the crispy. You don't want the. Yeah, fat. we're not going like the egg and the milk and all that stuff. It's just yeah. right in the flour. So That's we'll give that a minute or two, and then we toss in the basil and pop it out. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw the basil in now okay. at the last touch because it goes quick, but it pops a little All right. sometimes. Yeah, yeah, there it goes. Hey, yep, there we go. go. All right, get in there. All right. I'll cover you. <laughs> Thank you. We're good. It's always right when it first goes in. Next time I need those plastic glasses. Right? <laughs> and we'll just let that get a little crispy. That looks really good and it smells really good. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna pull this out now. The moment I've been waiting for. Look at that. a little bit. Yeah, you want to make sure you put it on paper towels. Oh yeah, yeah, you get all that <laughs> excess grease off of there for sure. Well, you will not be happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. I love rock shrimp. Yeah, Just, you see how they get all nice and crispy there. They're like little candy. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and that's everything there. Okay. And then I'll shut that off. And then what I'll do? You want to hold that for one sure. second? And then I'll get our plate. So what I did here is a little lemon and local honey aioli. So now the local honey is the what was McCoy's. It? McCoy's. Yeah, it's so made it's, from. It's a raw. It's a raw honey made from uh, salt palmetto. Salt palmetto, that's which right. is native to us. So we'll get some of that down on the plate. And you make that, of course, from scratch with the yeah, egg yolks. Yeah, so we do egg yolks, oil, a little garlic and shallot, and the honey and lemon. Oh, so we'll put that too. down there, and then I'll toss together. I did a little. Uh, the same honey, the salt from the honey, with a little bit of oil, olive oil, extra virgin, okay. and just salt. And we'll just go ahead and dress some arugula too to put on top of there. All my favorite things. Right. And what? Go ahead and do this. I got the hands that can handle it. But okay. <laughs> we just kind of pile everything right up in the middle there. Teflon fingers. Yeah, it's. <laughs> After all these years, have burned right, so no many times. No feeling right? in there anymore. <laughs> all right, we'll get those guys on there. Ooh, and we'll put that, on, we'll put that on that table. Got it. And then we'll get a little bit of our arugula over the top just to kind of freshen it up a little. Get some over here, a little over here. And a little over on top there. Got to fat them. And that is it. Now, I like to give it a nice little squeeze of fresh lemon right over the top. You must. And that's it. Beautiful. That is our dish. Local vegetable and rock shrimp Freedom Misto. Oh, beautiful. Mm -hmm. My favorite. Yeah, I'll get in there later. Let's try one of these. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Oh, that is fresh. Mm hmm Yeah. Oh, you gotta try it. Here, dot us. All right. When you're in the mood for something different in Delray Beach, think dot us. We're here at Swank Specialty Produce, and we've got with us the woman, Jody Swank. And she is going to be, I don't know, giving us a little bit of a tour around the whole farm. Sure. How many acres do you have here? We have 20 acres, and we farm on about seven and a half today. Okay, now where are we standing? This is absolutely gorgeous. What is this? This is amaranth. We grow several colors of hanging amaranth that go in our wildflower bouquets. We sell them at the West Palm Beach and Delray Beach Farmer's Market on Saturdays. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, I've seen actually some of them before going to the West Palm Beach Green Market. And you also have the best fruits and vegetables all over town. In fact, every restaurant that I go to talks and raves about you. Thank you. We've been growing produce out on the farm for 18 years, and we grow over 360 varieties of food on the farm. We grow and sell our produce to many of the top chefs throughout Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach County, and we do Swank Table, our dinners on the farm, where the chefs that come in use probably 50 to 75 percent of the food we grow in their food. You guys might remember last year we visited for the Three Little Red Waddle Pigs dinner, I believe it is. We've got another one coming up. The big one that everybody knows about is, of course, the White Dinner. It is. It's our sixth annual and we are already sold out with 240 guests. Even for me? We'll find you a seat. All right, there, there you go. All right, <laughs> and then after that comes what? After that comes the Three Little 
Gloucestershire pigs. All right, new pigs. New pigs, <laughs> new breed. And we have a beautiful Mother's Day brunch coming up on May 12th uh -huh. and an Easter Sunday brunch on April 21st. So people can find you on your website, Swank Specialty Produce? Yes, swankspecialtyproduce.com. All right, and now your husband is gonna take us into the greenhouse? Darren is going to take you into the hydroponic shade house where Ooh. we grow all of our leaf production, microgreens, and cucumbers. Oh, sounds good, stay with us. Looking for an authentic Japanese steakhouse? Welcome to Saito's. Enjoy Saito's specialty sushi rolls, like their signature city place roll, featuring spicy tuna, pineapple, and avocado. Saito's also offers the best dinner on a show. Whether you enjoy surf or turf, there's something for everyone, and it's always a lot of fun. Saito's Japanese Steakhouse, Hibachi and Sushi, now with six locations to choose from. Enjoy dinner and a show today. For over 30 years, there's been only one place in Palm Beach County serving up the most authentic Maryland-style blue crabs. Riggins Crab House. Whether you want them steamed in beer and J.O. spice or smothered in garlic and oil, whether you want just a few or all you can eat, Chef Gino's got you covered. Plus, there's Dungeness Snow, King Crab, and Stone Crab in season, and the fresh catch of the day to live Maine Lobster. Come see why people travel near and far to Riggins, the area's only authentic Maryland-style crab house. Want to know where the locals go for delicious made-from-scratch cooking, craft beers, and top-shelf drinks at value prices? Lou's Bar & Grill in Tequesta. Lou's Bar & Grill is the perfect spot for mouth-watering seafood, pastas, and more. Feast on Lou's seared ahi tuna, the penne bogotaro, or their blackened salmon in a light but decadent lobster sauce. Whatever you crave, you'll find it at Tequesta's Best Kept Secret. Lou's Bar & Grill and Tiki Bar on US 1 just north of Indian Town. Hi, it's Pam Triolo, and we are in the kitchen, in my kitchen to be exact, and we're gonna make a great recipe with our fresh ingredients from the farmer's market. We're talking farm to table, so let's use the freshest ingredients, right? Today's recipe is an Italian favorite of mine, escarole and beans, scotto and fagioli. You know what I'm saying? You can use cannellini beans, that's the easiest way, and actually the easiest way is to use them in the can. Very simple, you can rinse them off or use the liquid that's in it, that's okay too. Or you can of course soak your cannellini beans, the fresh ones overnight, and then cook them up so they're ready for your recipe, whichever you prefer. The scuttle, this is what it looks like, it's absolutely beautiful. Mmm, some people think it's a little bit bitter, it's not. It's perfect when it's cooked. And we're gonna show you how to cook it a couple of different ways today. Along with our beans and escarole, we're gonna need some chicken stock, or if you wanna do it the true vegan way, some vegetable stock. You're gonna need about two cups of that, about three cloves of garlic. We've got some crushed red pepper, salt and pepper to taste, and I throw in a little bit of oregano and a little bit of basil. You can pretty much do this in one pot, or if you wanna make it soup, or you wanna make it pasta, Yes, we're gonna use Ditalini pasta. It's a little tube-shaped pasta. And of course, the fresh Italian bread is for the sopping. Let's go to the stove. This is the Ditalini pasta. You can see it's a very thin, small tube, and they cut it into even smaller pieces. Kind of similar to an elbow macaroni without the curves. We're gonna throw this into our salted boiling water. You don't have to stir it constantly, but make sure you check it so it doesn't stick to the bottom of the pan. First thing we're gonna do is add about uh, two tablespoons of olive oil, maybe three. It's a big pan. Then we're going to add our garlic. Again, this is about three of the larger size cloves. And we're gonna let this brown very gently for about a minute or so. Remember, you never wanna cook garlic too much in the oil because if it gets really well done, it's gonna be very, very bitter and make your whole dinner ruin. So don't do that. All right, this is perfect. It hasn't gotten too well done. Turning it down to medium. And now we're gonna put in our escarole and some parsley. I like a little mixture of the two of them. You feel that? A little chicken stock. This is two cups, okay? 
I'm gonna add this in so we don't spark up here. And I'll put the escarole in. This is two heads of escarole. If you've ever noticed you ever cook, I don't know, collard greens or spinach, sometimes you can use the biggest bag of greens that you've ever seen, right? Like all of this, wait till you see how much it cooks up to. Okay, we're a little bit wilted now. We've got a little further to go. But first thing I wanna do now that it's manageable in my pan, I wanna take some seasonings. Key part, crushed red pepper. I like just about a pinch. What is a pinch, Pam? I don't know. You can pinch it with your fingers and then you throw it in. I've got a little bit of salt. A little crushed red pepper. I'm sorry, yeah, black pepper. And you can use fresh basil leaves. I just have a little bit of dried I'm gonna add. And I like a little oregano in mine. I like my pasta fazool with a little oregano. And I forgot to pick that up at the market, so I'm using some dried. I'm just gonna stir this together now. And I'm going to add my beans. Here we go, folks. Add my cannellini beans. Ooh. When you cook these down nicely, they get so nice and creamy. Here we go. And remember, we always want a salt to taste and season to taste, so we'll taste along the way. Trust me, it's the best part of cooking. <laughs> well, I've got my seasoning just perfect. Not too spicy, but you still feel a little heat. Salt is right on. We're good, the tenderness of the escarole is perfect. I'm gonna turn this off, and now we're gonna get ready to plate it up. Now, I normally would, because I'm making pasta, throw the pasta in here, add a little bit at a time, and let it absorb all that liquid. But because I'm making it three ways for you, you can have half the amount of pasta, and add more stock and make it soup. Or you could just not have the pasta at all and just sop it up with some of that beautiful Italian bread. So here we go for the pasta. And as always, I like to season with a little Locatelli Pecorino Romano. There's nothing like it. And here we go with our scarole and fagioli. Mmm. And don't forget, take this. And make sure you get all that good liquid. This, a nice glass of wine. Mind to Ben. Farm to Table continues in West Palm Beach, this time around with a truly vegan restaurant. It's called Darbster, and everybody who loves vegan food knows where to go. All right, we're inside now, Darbster, and they've got a couple of chefs. First of all, they've got a cooking chef that actually puts things on heat, and they have this guy who's an expert. He's a raw chef. His name is Robert, and he's the bomb. Raw food chef. Yep. <laughs> so tell me now what the whole philosophy is at Darbster's. I know this because, you know, you're in walking distance from my house, right. so I can I can stumble on over here and have some of your great vegan food. But, you know, what's the story? How did it start? That's, that's the draw. Completely plant-based, 100%, the whole menu. Uh, the owners are committed vegans. They, they started the restaurant about 10 years ago. They needed a place to eat. Uh, <laughs> and so they started one of their own. It's named after their dog. Um, we've got all kinds of different things going. We do some local vendors when we can. Um, well, we're talking farm to table today. And, um, and I know that you guys, I mean, obviously because you're vegan, you use a lot of vegetables and fruits and stuff like that. But I know you try to buy local whenever you can, or statewide here in Florida. Yep. Um, some of the gorgeous produce you have right behind me here. Where did this all come from? These things right here were grown in a community garden. I have a community garden plot in West Palm Beach. Where uh, at? It's uh, right across from Belvedere Elementary School. I love, I know exactly where you're talking uh, about. And so I've got a couple plots there. So I've grown some collard greens, uh, some kale, some celery. Uh, but we also use some local farms as well. Look at that beautiful celery. And Good what are stuff. these? So I, I pick it on the way into work in the morning. You can't get more fresh than that. Yeah. Uh, we've got some beautiful mushrooms um, from a, a local supplier, Kissimmee River. These are oyster mushrooms. They come in these pinks. They come in this gorgeous yellow. Uh, Chef Edder's going to cook some up later for a little uh, oyster mushroom risotto. That's Ooh, fantastic. I can't wait for that. But you're going to make us something first, right? But I'm going to make a little um, Asian collard salad. So as I said, I picked these this morning. Those are beautiful collard greens. I'm and sorry, so, I forgot to show them. Is 
that gorgeous or what? We'll yeah. just take the stem out of these and do a little <laughs> chiffonade. So you got a collared chiffonade going on. You got a collared chiffonade. They they can be a little tough and a little chewy, so we do try to make it nice and small. But you took that vein out, so that's usually but the hardest But we took the part. big chunk out of there. And we roll, it up roll like them sushi. up. And slice it up. Nice it up. Uh, so I'm going to use a little bit of apple cider vinegar. That kind of breaks down the collard green, makes it a little less chewy. Also very good for you. So very good for you too. So we will throw a little bit of that in there. Okay. And a little, little lime juice. Perfect. Put a little bit of acid, a little bit of orange juice. I'm liking it. Make this. it a little sweet. Local orange juice too, Indian River. Beautiful. A little soy. Salt. And I think we'll do a little zest. Zesty. Zesty. It <laughs> gives it a little more, a little higher flavor profile when you get a little zest in there. I love citrus zest. And a little Malden salt. What's Malden salt? Malden salt. It's a sea salt. It comes from England. Okay. It's where my mother-in-law is from, actually. It's a little, you can see it's a little crunchier. It's a bigger oh, grain. Yeah. You got your heart in the salt. So I love it. I love it. I love mm, it. That's good. Whip that up. And then we'll throw in, I got some raisins here for a little more sweetness. Okay. And some cherry tomatoes for a little color. I've never had a collard salad before. I always cook them down, you know? Yeah, they, put, most put people do like cook them down. <laughs> yeah, none of that here. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. A few more for color. Uh, high in iron, really good for your blood. Collard greens. Beautiful. And we'll just give it a little mix. That this one's better when it when it kind of marinates for a little while, oh, yeah. and you let the acid break down the greens. But you eat with your eyes. That's right. And they always say, you know, I mean, if you're trying to add more leafy greens and colored bright vegetables to your diet, which is the best thing in the world which for is you. Which a good thing for it. Get a little dressing. Get tomatoes on there. And get your raisins. That's looking beautiful. And there we go. So we've got our Thai collard salad here. Asian salad, it's got a little tanginess to it. Uh, fresh local collard greens, carrots, cherry tomatoes, raisins, and kind of a zesty lime vinaigrette. Okay, this is not one to eat on a first date though. Yeah, it's gonna stick in your teeth. It's gonna stick in my teeth. But honey, I'm eating my greens today. <laughs> you make your mom happy. Mmm, that's delicious. Okay. Really good. This is Darren Swank, and pretty much he's the guy you see with his head down doing just about everything on the farm. <laughs> you gotta yank him out to try to pull him to talk with us today, because I know you're so busy all the time. Yes. So we're here in the what, the hydroponic? Shade house. Shade house, yep. and this is where you make this. Correct. Which are microgreens? Yes, that's what these are. Okay, what exactly is this one sitting in here? Uh, this is um, red frilly mustard. How yes. do you start doing one of these? Well, we start with a, a 200 count tray, okay. plug tray. It's a bunch of these plugs uh, are in a tray. Uh, we dibble the tra tray and then we hand seed it in the greenhouse. Okay. And then it just uh, you know floods the trays you know once a day, and then the uh, plants germinate. And then once they germinate, after about a week, two weeks, depending on what it is, we bring them out and we just place them into the hydroponic gullies. And everyone thinks that okay, you need sun. So you, if it's a shade area, Correct. how does it get the proper nutrients that it needs? Well, sun, I mean, the shade's just to lower the threshold of the sunlight down here because right. it's, it's quite sunny in South Florida. So we lower the sun levels down so the leaves are a little bit more supple and mm -hmm. not so coarse. Now I see you with the animals on the farm. I yes. see you out in the fields with the wildflowers. What's your favorite part of the farm? Um, I, mean, I just like the farm in general. I don't think I have a particular favorite part. I mean, it's all nice to me. It's therapeutic, isn't it, too? Yes, that's true. I love it. Thank you so much for having us and thank you for coming on camera with us. Thank you. It's a treat. Looking for an authentic Japanese steakhouse? Welcome to Saito's. Enjoy Saito's specialty sushi rolls like their signature city place roll featuring spicy tuna, pineapple, and avocado. 
Sidos also offers the best dinner on a show. Whether you enjoy surf or turf, there's something for everyone, and it's always a lot of fun. Saito's Japanese Steakhouse, Hibachi, and Sushi. Now with six locations to choose from. Enjoy dinner and a show today. For over 30 years, there's been only one place in Palm Beach County serving up the most authentic Maryland-style blue crabs. Riggins Crab House. Whether you want them steamed in beer and J.O. spice or smothered in garlic and oil, whether you want just a few or all you can eat, Chef Gino's got you covered. Plus, there's Dungeness, Snow, King Crab, and Stone Crab in season, and the fresh catch of the day to live Maine Lobster. Come see why people travel near and far to Riggins, the area's only authentic Maryland-style crab house. Want to know where the locals go for delicious made-from-scratch cooking, craft beers, and top-shelf drinks at value prices? Lou's Bar & Grill in Tequesta. Lou's Bar & Grill is the perfect spot for mouth-watering seafood, pastas, and more. Feast on Lou's seared ahi tuna, the penne bogotaro, or their blackened salmon in a light but decadent lobster sauce. Whatever you crave, you'll find it at Tequesta's best-kept secret. Lou's Bar & Grill and Tiki Bar on US 1 just north of Indian Town. All right, we've had a wonderful time here at Swank Specialty Produce. We've been all over the farm. I've even driven the tractor. <laughs> that was so fun. Jody Swank, you have been the ultimate host, you and your husband. Thank you so much for everything today. But, you know, this is kind of a big deal. We're standing on the porch of your giant farmhouse that you're building here at Swank. Yes, we are. We're uh, in the process of building a 4,100 square foot farmhouse. We are moving out of a 450 square foot <laughs> tiny home I remember for that. 13 years and uh, now going into our dream home. Oh my goodness. Well, you're going to be living large and you're also going to be living large in that gorgeous kitchen. Right beyond this wall here is going to be a, a great kitchen where you're going to actually bring in chefs and you yourself are going to cook and you're going to hold classes here, right? Um, we will definitely be bringing in chefs. I can't say I'll be cooking because <laughs> I can't, but um, our chefs will come in and uh, they will do cooking classes for up to 35 guests comfortably. Well, now what about a cooking class with the food lady? We would love that, Pam. All We'd right. be honored to have you cook. All right, that would be fantastic. And in fact, when you get this thing open, I want to make sure I would love to come and cook with you in the kitchen. For sure. All right. Yes, definitely. Thank you again, Jody. Thanks, Darren. Thanks, everyone here at Swank Specialty Produce. Thank you to all the great restaurants on today's show. And of course, thank you to you, our viewers, for watching us. We'll see you next time on The Food Lady. Jesse Still. <laughs> Chef Jesse Still. Forget about it. I've got like collard greens stuck to the top of my mouth. <laughs> it's the scuttle in the fajo. Forget about Salon Services by Palm Beach Beauty Salon, located in the LA Fitness Plaza PGA National. Services include skin care and facial waxing, makeup artistry, great for weddings, proms, or any special occasion. Featuring ergonomically designed shampoo bowls to prevent strain on neck. With a team of talented hairstylists in a fun and energetic environment, all working together to ensure your visit a success. Thank you.